I remember when I was a kid, I used to dream about finding a dinosaur egg in my backyard and hatching it and having this best friend of a T-Rex or Triceratops that I could ride around and do whatever I wanted with. Now, this was an obvious fantasy, but it's not a fantasy to assume that you could find dinosaur fossils in your backyard. And in fact, that's what happened in the summer of 1990. Sue, a crew member from the Black Hills Institute, came across a Tyrannosaurus rex fossil. The crew had been looking for fossils all summer, and they had found some specimens, but nothing compared to what she had just accidentally stumbled upon. This fossil was 80% complete. It was the most complete T-Rex fossil that had ever been found. But soon after the remains were found, a dispute arose over who was the legal owner of the bones. The Black Hills Institute had obtained permission from the owner of the land, Maurice Williams, to excavate and remove the skeleton, and had, according to Larson, paid Williams $5,000 for the remains. But Williams claims that the money was not for the sale of the fossil, and that he'd only allowed Larson to remove and to clean the fossils so that they could later be sold. Williams, however, was also a member of a tribe, and that tribe claimed that those bones belonged to them. However, the property that the fossil had been found within was held in a trust by the United States Department of the Interior. Thus, the land technically belonged to the government. So in 1992, the FBI and National Guard raided the site and seized the fossils and held them until the dispute was settled. And after a much extended trial, the court had decided that Maurice Williams was the true owner and that the remains should be returned. And they were in 1995. Williams then decided that he'd sell the remains. Not many were shocked by this. He contacted Sotheby's to have him auctioned off. But many were worried that the remains would be sold to a private owner and that the public wouldn't have access to viewing them. The Field Museum in Chicago also had concerns for the Tyrannosaurus Rex, who had now been named Sue after its founder. And so they wanted to make a bid to purchase the Tyrannosaurus. Concern arose that they didn't have the budget to purchase Sue, and so they contacted private citizens asking for help. And it was on October 4th, 1997, that the auction was held. They did in fact win Sue for $7.6 million, thanks to the help of private citizens. What does it mean when four different entities can have property rights to the same thing? Maybe it means property rights are prehistoric, and just because something's prehistoric doesn't mean it's set in stone. Hey everybody, it's Jacob Williams from wildacademy.com. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, please go ahead. If you're listening to this on Stitcher or iTunes, you can find me at youtube.com forward slash Jake Day Williams. From there, you can circle me on Google+. These audio recordings are follow-ups to the articles that I posted a week prior. If you would like to comment on the article so that I can answer either your questions or throw in your additional information into these audio recordings, you can go ahead and follow me on Google+. And then when I post the articles, go ahead and comment down below, and I will make sure to get those in there. Thank you for listening, and have a wild week.